comes to now, uh, I suppose, getting stock specific, let's, let's lead off with Whitehaven Coal, uh, because at these levels, people would be concerned to wonder to themselves, is there going to be a pickup? Uh, we know projects um, in the wider sense of the word are looking slightly shaky. That's probably an underestimate. Um, what's your call? Cousin, we've seen Whitehaven Coal shares down by 30% just in the last three months. And in fact, yesterday we saw the shares reaching the lowest level that we've seen in around about three years. As you mentioned, part of the uh, problem is the weaker coal prices that we are seeing. And it, it, of course, needs to develop some of its projects. But the other concern is around Nathan Tinkler and the impact that that may have on stocks. We know that Nathan Tinkler is being pursued for a number of bills at the moment. Mervac with a $17 million bill. We have our Blackwood uh, pursuing. 28.4 million dollars and also putting in an application in the Supreme Court to wind up or, or, or to appoint administrators to his uh, private company and we're also uh, looking at the sale of his racing uh, business which he bought for 300 million dollars which is reportedly on sale for around the 200 million dollar mark of course this is important because Nathan Tinkler owns a 21 percent stake in Whitehaven Coal so that's about a 600 million dollar stake in Whitehaven Coal and and um, I guess speculation that perhaps we could see some of that stake being sold down to pay those bills, having a negative impact in terms of Whitehaven's share price. So not only are we seeing weaker coal prices, but speculation around the fact that we may see uh, some of Nathan Tinkler's stake in Whitehaven coal being sold off has put downward pressure on the shares. This is a 52-week chart. You can see just where the shares are at the moment, down by 30% in the last quarter. So not good news for Whitehaven shareholders. Julia, um, give us some thoughts around uh, other stocks that you might be watching today. I, I guess we feel we're a bit um, beholden to some of the global trends at the moment. Um, what's giving us direction locally? One of the big things overnight was the reaction to Caterpillar's uh, revision to uh, forecast. And we did see Caterpillar shares down by 4.2%. Now, this is important for Seven Holdings Group. And that's because Seven Holdings Group's main operating company is West Track, which, of course, is the Caterpillar dealership. Um, if we have a look at how much of trading revenue this contributes, is 90% of trading revenue and about 68% of EBIT. So we could see downward pressure on Seven Holdings uh, Group on the back of uh, Caterpillar's downturn in share price today. So that's one stock that we are going to be watching. Also, there's a report in the Australian Financial Review that Woolies could be close to selling uh, its Dick Smith stores or its chain and reportedly a price of between 10 to $50 million. Now, that would be a positive for Woolworths shares. We know that the sale has taken longer than expected and there has been speculation that perhaps there could have been some issues in terms of this sale. In the last result, we did see Woolies writing down another um, $120 million impairment charge which takes the total impairments for those Dick Smith stores to $420 million. Essentially, the book value um, on the accounts is zero for Dick Smith. So any price which is raised through that sale would be seen as a positive. But of course, the key driver of Woolies share price is uh, the food and liquor division and the fact that it's very much seen as a defensive stock with a very solid balance sheet. So if we have a look at Woolies over the past year, the shares have been doing quite well and are on positive ground. We've seen a rise of about 17% over the last year. But altogether, it does look like it's going to be a difficult day for the Australian market. We did see overseas markets very volatile overnight. The S&P 500 was actually up by 0.4% early on in the session, but by the end it was down by 1%. So that's likely to put quite a bit of pressure on the Aussie share market. We have a look at some of the ADRs which are traded in New York. We saw BHP down by 1.9%. So it does look like that material space set to come under pressure once again. On the flip side though, we did see the Telstra American Depository Receipts seeing a rise of 0.7%. So very very much looks like those defensive areas are going to be in play. And of course, volumes are another thing we're watching. Yesterday, we saw just $3 billion going through the market. That's 30% down on the average uh, value traded over the last 30 days. It is school holidays, and we are expecting to see those volumes really picking up later on in the week because of options expiry tomorrow. Um, so we are expecting good volumes on Thursday and Friday. But watching those volumes today with school holidays, some of the market also on holidays. And just also closer to home as well, if you like, Julia, just understanding those moves in the benchmark in Japan with quite a, an ex-div theme driving uh, price action into lower than usual, uh, I suppose, uh, waters. So don't, I suppose, get too alarmist at that one, but just see it for what it is. Mm. 
Uh, we are seeing dividend season at the moment uh, here in Australia as well and I guess uh, that ha does have a major impact on stocks where we do see dividends being paid out in uh, well ex-dividend August and September and then we see a large amount sort of being paid out in November and December and usually that's a positive for stocks coming into the end of the year because we do see dividend reinvestment plans coming into play and some of that money finding its way back to the share market so hopefully later on in the year that does give the market a little bit of a lift but of course if we have a look at market at the moment it's a little bit of a tug of war on one hand we've seen extraordinary central bank action uh, we've seen the US with the Federal Reserve and unlimited quantitative easing Mario Draghi with his uh, bond buying plans and even the Bank of Japan accelerating its asset purchase plans as well and really accelerating uh, that easing over there but then on the other hand we have these concerns around global growth and the slowing of global trade and I guess that impacts very strongly on economies like Japan and and like China and certainly the bellwether warnings that we've seen in the last couple of weeks certainly don't help we, we we've seen Caterpillar this week we saw FedEx last week so a few warning signals coming through for the market and a bit of a tug of war between the stimulus by central banks and signs that the global trade cycle global growth cycle is slowing